Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video I'll be doing working through a problem, again, that uh, I've had on past exams um, or some variant of the sort. Uh, this problem specifically is, is an indic or a work through of the mesh current analysis that we've uh, talked about and has various different elements in here as we'll, we can see. We have some resistors. We have a current source coming diagonally through the schematic as such. Uh, we also have a dependent voltage source up here in the corner. Um, all the various uh, uh, values of each of the given elements are defined. Uh, note that the value or the indication for what this Vx quantity here is defined as the voltage across my 2 ohm resistor there. And then also note that I've already gone through and uh, predefined the specific mesh currents. So again, when we're defining, if you're just given a problem open-ended and you have to come up with uh, solving for the various currents. You could define the mesh currents however you want to, uh, but to make it a little bit easier as we work through the problem here, I've gone ahead and defined, uh, so we have a mesh current IA going in this direction just through this basically like triangular, triangular loop here. Uh, we have mesh current IB uh, on the upper half in this triangle right there, and then mesh current IC coming around this side of the circuit as well. Um, so go ahead and take a couple of minutes to copy this down in your notes, pause the video real quick, and then we'll come back and work on how we uh, actually solve for those various mesh currents, uh, IA, IB, and IC. Okay, so as we look at the problem, um, again, how do we sort of uh, get started? It's a lot of problem for uh, you know, many students uh, until you kind of get used to working through these things. Um, in this particular problem, I can kind of immediately point out at least one thing that will maybe help us uh, e more easily get to a solution, and that's the fact that I have a current source sitting here directly between two of my mesh currents. Um, so this, again, what is called the uh, super mesh, or we can apply this, the concept of the super mesh in order to simplify the analysis on this side, and then we'll still have to write a mesh equation on that so for that side of the circuit for the mesh current IC. But again, I won't draw it all, t uh, all the way around to uh, muck up my drawing too much, but um, due to the mesh current or the super mesh that we have due to the current source, we can just write a single equation that's going to go all the way around uh, this loop as I'm indicating right here. And then we'll create, write an equation that describes how this current source is impacting or how that's going to help us define the relationship between IA and IB. So first, let's write this equation for what we would have going around this uh, super mesh loop that we've defined. And now again, with the any mesh current analysis, what are we doing? We're trying to write an equation that's describing the, uh, the voltage drops across each given element, as it were. And so that's how we are going to write our specific equations, okay? So if we look at, initially, I have a start, let's say start here in this corner, and then we'll work our way around this way. Uh, we have our resistor <coughs> two um, times the only mesh current that's going through that resistor is just IB. So this would be to IB, that, that's the voltage drop now across that resistor, which is also happens to be the same as VX, but we'll just uh, keep it as this uh, for now. Um, then I have plus coming around here, I see I have a, I'm gonna have a voltage drop across this 10 ohm resistor, but now um, as, you know, as you should note that we have two mesh currents that are impacting the total current flow through that resistor. So for this, I would have 10 times I, the positive quantity would be IB because that's traveling in the direction that I'm writing this equation or, or in the loop that we're traveling. So I'll do IB and then I see that IC is actually traveling in the opposite direction. So of course I would need to subtract off IC from that quantity. That would be the total, the net current through my 10 ohm resistor. Um, and then coming around here, I have no resistor on the bottom here, so that's not going to, I don't need to write a uh, part for that. Uh, but then I have this 8 ohm resistor over here, which I see is only impacted by the mesh current IA. So I'll just drop down to the second line here. So to say plus eight times IA. And we know then that this has to sum to equal to zero, okay? So that, this is basically the uh, mesh current equation that we've written around this super mesh that we've defined due to the fact that we have this current source sitting here between two of our mesh currents, all right? So now we could ask ourselves, well, how do we relate um, these two mesh currents, IA and IB, through this current source, um, this five amp current source that's sitting right here? Um, so again, I could, generally I look at what direction is that current source uh, traveling, and then I pick the, I start with the mesh current that's traveling in the same direction, and sometimes they both are, but in this case we see that uh, IA is traveling in that direction, but IB is traveling in the counter direction. So to define, uh, I could say that five amp current source 
would tell us what the difference in IA uh, minus IB would be, okay? So that'll be another equation that we'll need to be able to plug everything back in. But now I see I have two equations here, but yet I still have three unknowns overall. Um, so then we, of course, need to look at this side of the circuit, which tells us something about what IC is doing. So we can write another mesh current equation around this part of the circuit. So let's start up here, and then we'll kind of work our way around in this direction. So first I have this 50 ohm resistor. So my 50 ohm resistor, the only current traveling through that is IC, so that'd be 50 times IC. Um, then I come across this uh, dependent voltage source, which is going from positive to negative, so it's a voltage drop, so it'd be a, it's gonna be a positive quantity, and the quantity is defined as five IX. So there'd be plus five, I'm sorry, not IX, VX, plus five VX, okay. Then I come down this way, I, I see I have this 50 ohm resistor. Again, the only current traveling through that resistor is IC. So that would also be plus 50 just times IC. Uh, coming around here, I have nothing on the bottom, and then I'm traveling back up through this 10 ohm resistor. So it will be plus 10 times, now I'm traveling with my current IC, so that's gonna be IC but then I also have the current, the mesh current IB, again, counteracting the direction of flow with IC, so it'll be IC minus IB, and that's the last element that I have in that loop, and so that should all sum to zero as well, okay? Um, okay, great, so I I've, I've have a third equation, and I thought I only needed three equations, but now we've introduced, of course, the fourth variable, which is due to this dependent voltage source, so now really to get to the final solution, um, and let me indicate here, let's see, we have like one equation there, second equation here, third equation here, and this is gonna be our fourth equation. Uh, so Vx, again, defined across this two ohm resistor right here. Uh, as we basically, as we kind of noted up here when we were writing that first equation, it's just gonna be equal to uh, the value of that resistor two times Ib, okay? So now with all of these four equations, we have enough information to do a little substitution, manipulation. I encourage you to go ahead and pause the video, do that work on your own, and then restart it, and you can double check your answers uh, from there, okay? Okay, so if you've taken the time to work through those various equations that we had, again, should have just been relatively straightforward substitution, a little equation manipulation, but uh, otherwise more or less straightforward. Also kind of note that this was a problem I gave on an exam where I don't allow calculators. So if you thought any of that math was overly difficult that you needed a calculator, I encourage you to continue practicing on that. Uh, but as we look to the final solutions, what you should hopefully have uh, gotten to was uh, that I, our mesh current IA was equal to three amps, uh, IB was negative two amps, and then IC actually uh, ended up being zero amps, which I mean, you know, some students ask, well, how can that be possible? How can I have no current flow? Um, again, the, you know, levels of current and voltage that we have in the circuit are really purely defined by the various elements. And so it just so happens because of the values that I chose for the resistors and the uh, sources and whatnot that there actually is in fact no net current flow on this side of the circuit and it turns out that there's, we only have current flowing on each, uh, through each of these uh, parts of the circuit indicated by IA and IB. So that's about it, we have the solution we wanted and that'll wrap it up for this video, thank you.